Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be talking about so-called regular expressions. Uh, some people like to abbreviate regular expressions as as rejack, rejack, like this. They like to pro uh, abbreviate it as regex, like this. Uh, but uh, I will just say they're regular expressions. Now. Up to this point, we've just talked about uh, languages very much within the context of developing finite automata. So things as, such as DFAs, NFAs, and epsilon NFAs. And these provide machine-like descriptions for defining a language. So remember when I give you a DFA or an NFA or an epsilon NFA, I give you a formal definition for which I can define a language based on its extended transition function, correct? So these are machine-like descriptions for a language. Now, what I want to do today is I'm going to focus on a way we can declare the strings accepted for a given language, like almost like I'm doing algebra, where I have variables and so-called numbers, just like an algebra. Instead, these are instead of variables, I'm going to have so-called expressions, and instead of numbers, I'm going to have symbols. And the way I'm going to do this is regular expressions actually facilitate the ability to do this. So you might ask, Dan, why should we study regular expressions? Well, you'll see quite quickly that this allows you a way that you can quite simply write down uh, the, these, uh, write, express a language quite quickly. And it's actually quite easy to spot what it's supposed to do. So I'll, today I'll be mostly focusing on defining them for you, and then we'll be doing a lot of examples where we're going to design regular expressions. Regular expressions have all sorts of applications in programming languages, and in particular, they're used very often for search features. Uh, say, for example, I have a little description in the notes towards the end of this section, if you want to take a look at it in more detail. But for example, if you're familiar with the Unix operating system, if you're familiar with grep, uh, that is, that for example uses regular expressions. Uh, but many web based search, search queries and things like that use types of regular expressions. And in practice, the way it works is that you take the regular expression and there's a way you could transform the regular expression into a finite automaton. And that, so for a given query, you can build one of these machines which we're going to see at some point in the coming lectures, how to do this. And by doing this, you can build a specialized uh, automaton for your given query. So it's actually quite beautiful in the way you can use these expressions. So it's a very user-friendly way of expressing a language that you want the strings to represent. So when I say strings represent, I mean a language. So. Does everybody have a general gist of what we're going to be doing next? So this is going to be kind of neat. Um, so if you have never seen something like this before, it, it's going to it's going to knock your socks off because <laughs> I'm going to be able to describe a lot of things that I was doing up to this point in very simple language. No pun intended. Actually, it is intended entirely. <laughs> so, so let me define a regular expression for you. So let's define what a regular expression is. I'm going to do this inductively, just like I've done quite often. Uh, we define regular expressions, regular expressions, uh, inductively as follows. Now I must stress that this induction definition it's very useful to think about in both directions. So sometimes thinking of the regular expressions recursively is very helpful. So I must stress that when you see the word inductively, you can also think recursively as well. Um, they're really just, the induction is just the same side of the, it's another way of talking about recursion. Uh, but I find this intuition is very helpful when you think of it in both directions sometimes. So I'm gonna naturally give you a base case. Now these are going to be the, kind of like the most elementary oper elementary parts of the regular expression. So just keep that in mind. I haven't gotten to the part where we're going to actually express things kind of like an algebra. Uh, three cases are possible. So these are the only three. So the first case is that if I write down epsilon and or and uh, empty set, 
Uh, these are regular expressions. So these are regular expressions. These are regular expressions representing representing the languages the languages the set containing the empty string and the empty language respectively respectively so what do i mean by this what do i mean by this to elaborate the language of the regular expression consisting of the symbol uh, em the empty string symbol epsilon is just the set epsilon containing epsilon and the la the em language of the em of the regular expression that represents the empty language that's of course the empty language so you want to look at these epsilon and the empty set over there as symbols but they aren't like You'll see what I mean when we get there. They're going to serve their own purposes in different ways. Um, now, this distinction is going to be somewhat more important. I'm going to underline uh, symbols that are going to be corresponding to expressions for the regular expressions. But I'm going to not underline it when it's actually a, a symbol. So just I want to make sure that's clear. So if A is any symbol, and I'm talking about like in an alphabet, uh, any symbol, then A, bold, is a regular expression. Is a regular expression representing representing the set containing the symbol A, that is, that is the language of the expression that looks like A is just simply the set containing simply the symbol A. So if you see A and I describe it as an expression like this, that simply means that it's just a set containing that symbol, the symbol that is represented by its expression. Is that clear to everybody? So I'm going to underline the symbol when I'm referring to it as an expression. When I don't, I'm just talking about the symbol A. So the third case, the third case is much simpler. <laughs> now, I talked about the idea of being possibly a notion of a variable. So three, a variable, a variable such as L, and it's is typically capitalized just to make it a little easier to distinguish between it's capitalized. That represents a language. So if you see me using cap a capital letter, that's usually me referring to another expression. So like I said, this is it, it's very useful to sometimes think of this recursively because oftentimes you'll see me write an expression as a symbol, like but and I don't mean like an imp like a symbol like this. I'm talking about a capital letter that represents an actual expression. So that's the basis for this. So let me just move on over here. We're going to do the inductive part. Now, you might ask, Dan, why do we call them regular expressions? Now, you may recall from a previous lecture, we talked about regular operators, right? So does anybody remember what the, what the regular operators are? Can somebody tell me what they are? Yeah, union, concatenation, and what's the other one? Starts with an S. It's a it, star. Yeah, star. Perfect. Yeah, those are our regular operators. 
So that's where the name for regular expressions comes from. It's regular from the regular operators. So a way you can think of regular expressions are if I give you a language and I ask you to perform a finite number of regular operators on the languages, that's what we'll be able to capture with a regular expression. So that's the intuition I want to give you when you're thinking about this. So we introduce uh, the regular operators. plus parentheses, because those are really handy to have. <laughs> plus parentheses. So I'm talking about like rounded parentheses like this. So that I can contain expressions within, I can nest them. That's why I need this. So the first one, as, as I suggested, is going to be union. So I'm going to say, oh yeah, I should maybe point out that uh, that uh, I'm going to refer to different symbols at, like E or an F. These are going to be uh, going to be expressions similar to what I described for step three of this basis. So I'm going to say E F like this. I'm going to often say E plus F or E or F or E union F, but whichever is easiest for me to read off to you is a regular expression where E or F uh, denotes the union of the language of the expression E and the language of the expression F. To be specific, that means that I'm talking about L E plus F is equal to the union of L of E and L of F, like this. So all I'm doing is I'm just considering the union of two expressions. Now remember, these expressions are going to ultimately represent languages. So that's why this plus or or union or or however you want to think about it. Sometimes it's useful to think of them in several different ways. Plus is mostly just because of its literal look and appearance, but it's more useful to think of it as or or union because they sort of have that relationship. Okay, so that's union. Uh, we have concatenation. It's going to feel like I'm just defining the regular operators to you all over again. So concatenation, EF. EF is a regular expression where, where EF, uh, EF denotes, EF denotes the concatenation, concatenation of L E and L of F. To be exact, i.e., the language of the concatenation of the expressions E, F is equal to, of course, the concatenation of E. I'm going to use this, this hollow dot just to make it clear when I'm writing this. That means concatenation, but this also does. Just it makes it a little easier to see. And you might ask, Dan, why am I writing it like this? Often, a dot like this is also used to denote concatenation. Concatenation whenever unclear. So whenever it's unclear, I'm going to just use a dot. So that's where this, why this hollow dot could be somewhat useful to think about. So this is just concatenation. We talked about this, this regular operator and how it works at one point. I'm just writing that if you give me two regular expressions, E and F, there's this concatenation operation that performs concatenation between the two languages that correspond to that regular expression. Are we okay with these two so far? Just don't be shy.
Yes. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, now I'm gonna give you star because I because that's the three we really were caring about. So if I give you the expression e star like this, it is a regular expression denoting denoting the star or closure. Remember, those are synonyms, mean the same thing. The closure of the language of E, i.e. the language of E star is equal to the language of E all starred. So remember, E here is the regular expression. Just be... Just be very clear. Okay, so that's the star. It's not a whole lot to say there. The last one is parentheses, because they often tend to be very helpful when I want to express exp things in a nice linear fashion. So if I give you parentheses around an expression, uh, this is just parenthesized. A uh, parenthesized. You didn't think you were going to see that word today. A uh, parenthesized. It's in the notes if you can't read it. A uh, parenthesized e. Parenthesized e is also a regular expression and is the same language. Is the same language. I.E. Sorry, as E. I should be clear. As E. To be clear, I'm saying that the language of parenthesized E is equal to the language of expression E. So these are our four kind of things we could do beyond cover kind of base elements over there on the basis part. So are we clear about what these four mean, everybody? I think we're good. I think we're good. So I must stress the order of, like you can think of it as order operations or the precedence of these operators. Uh, the order of for which we examine. Now obviously parentheses nest expressions. So I'm not gonna talk so much about that. They just nest it just like you do in algebra. But uh, if you're talking about the regular operators, the order of precedence is star then concatenation, then union. So if you ever wonder how to read off a, a regular expression, first see what it's nested in, then star, then concatenation, then, then you got union. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick example of what I mean by this. And then we'll start designing some regular expressions. So just to give you a quick example of what I mean by this. Uh, so when I write something like this, one zero with a star, then I write, so if this, so this for example is what a regular expression could look like. Remember I want to remind you that when I put an underline under this, I'm actually bold facing them. It just makes it a little easier for you to see it if I underline it. So this is just to distinguish between the expression that represents the symbol zero as opposed to just zero, the symbol. Uh, so when you read this, it's very compelling and tempting to try to put together ex parts of the regular expression that actually don't really belong to one another. So, so I just want to clarify what, how you would read this. And we'll see some examples so you can actually interpret this properly. I just want to tell you about the order of the, the operators just so that you can tell the difference when we start actually playing around with this. So when you see this, uh, remember the star gets applied first. So it'll be applied to the first thing it's grouped with. Uh, so in this example, you should interpret it that this zero 
gets starred only. Then it gets concatenated with the one. And then, of course, it's unioned by the zero. So this would be how you would interpret that regular expression in terms of the order for which the operators are being applied. So if whenever it's not clear, add parentheses. That's, that's usually the general rule when you're doing this. Is that clear, everybody? So I'm going to tell you more about what this stuff means when we start designing the regular expressions. I just mostly want to make it clear. So you, just like when you're doing algebra, or you're even doing basic arithmetic, multiplications, additions, divisions, exponentiation, they all have different orders for which you would apply them, right? It's, the, it's no different than this. So just remember, star, then concatenate, then union. That's, that's, uh, so whenever it's unclear. So for example, if I wanted to apply the star to this one and a zero, I would put parentheses around this, just to be clear. So let's do a first example. I want to consider trying to create a regular expression that gets me all binary strings. So I'll start off by helping us kind of guide through this. And as we go, I'm going to get you to help me more and more, OK? So if I start off with this, I'm going to first, and remember, whenever it's really unclear to you what exactly I'm designing for the regular expression, remember, I just appeal to the definitions of a regular expression. So for example, when you do a union, what does that actually mean? So let me just try to motivate this by first. So when you first say, I want to generate all the binary strings, I want you to notice uh, that the expression, so if I write the following expression down, uh, 0, union, 1, what language is this? Can somebody tell me what language this is? Think back to what the definition of union is. So what would what what does the set what does the language look like for this? So it's a zero and a one, and I take the union. So so what does that mean? So I'll take the language of the expression that represents the symbol zero. I would take the union of the language for which it represents this one. But what's this? That's just simply the symbol zero. And if I take the union of that with this, that's just one, right? So that means this regular expression is actually constructing, you can think of it like almost like I'm building the language using these operators. So this is equal is actually representing the language zero one, which are your binary symbols, right? So I have a question for you. How do I build the set of all binary strings then? Does anybody have any, any ideas of how I could build a regular expression that does that then? Yeah, so you put, so that's pretty much bang on. The only thing you have to, so yeah, you would basically do that, but remember, we have to put parentheses around carefully. So let me just uh, write that down. So applying star, so perfect. So applying star we get like this, right? That's what you're suggesting, is that, that I apply star to this. Yeah, perfect. So now notice, notice here, if you actually were to apply the definition of the star operator, so this is L of the regular expression, 0, 1, star, like this. But what's that? That's just, OK, well, we already determined what's inside these parentheses is, in fact, that set. It's just the set of binary symbols. So I end up with 0, 1, star. But that's exactly what we were looking for, right? <laughs> Actually, wait, I think I, let me get rid of that. We don't need that. <laughs> OK, a little ahead of myself. Because this right here, well, Technically, it's you. You would you could. I'm skipping a couple steps here, but anyways, the point is that you end up with all the binary strings, right? By applying the star. Uh, so, so let's proceed. So I have a question for you. So imagine I give you any alphabet, like this, like sigma. Can somebody tell me how I can build sigma star? 
So imagine I give you, I tell you that this consists of like symbols like A1, A2, all the way up to AN, for example. Can somebody tell me a regular expression that I can use to build sigma star? I'll give you a hint. It's very much like what we just did over here. So just imagine that sigma, the alphabet, is just 0 and 1. Yeah, so you would have like A1, and then you would want to like union it, right, with A2, right? Just like we... so. Think about it just with two symbols so far. So imagine that was zero and a one. So you would have, it's like zero, one, but now I have more symbols. So I would go like zero. So I'd have like A1, A2, A3, and you'd add, you'd union them all, to, all them together, right? And then you would put the star like this. And then I ask what the language of this regular expression is. That should be, it should be sigma star, right? Because you got to look at the union like I'm saying or. The minute you see it that way, it makes it makes a lot more sense, right? So it's like, oh, it's this or that or that or that, but I'm allowed to take as many of them as I like. Does everybody see that? So I'll let you think about that. I'll let you think about that. So let's let's try building another one. So let's do another example. Let's do something a little bit more exciting because I just wanted to show you this so that you could get an idea of like how we can kind of take together these regular operators to build a regular expression. Uh, so, so let's take a look here. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, let's uh, design, this is a classic example, uh, design a regular expression uh, that is all strings of alternating zeros and ones. And I'm allowed to have zero or more symbols. So I'm going to try to design a regular expression that's going to consist of all the strings that are alternating zeros and ones. And that includes the empty string too. So I'm just going to, I just want to have it so that I can, I can get, so for example, I'm talking about like if I had no symbols, of course, empty string. If I have one, I'm allowed to have a one, I'm allowed to have a zero. Um, so I'm looking for a language that's going to look something like this, zero, one, one, zero, uh, zero, one, zero, uh, one, zero, one, and so on. So I'm going to try building a, a regular expression that captures that language. Now, at first you might say, Dan, uh, let's start off with, when you think about designing a regular expression, the way I like to think about it first is try to take the first string you can think of and try to build one off of that. So we know we're going to need alternating zeros and ones. So, per, so you know for certain that there's going to be a string zero, one in this language, right? So I know zero, one's going to be there. So I'm going to first consider, so I'm going to first consider string, string uh, zero, one. I forgot to technically underline these. Let me underline those. Those are supposed to be bold. Uh, I knew I was going to go it at one point. <laughs> so first consider the string 0, 1. So if I take the regular expressions of 1 and the regular expression of 0, and I concatenate them together, so if I take, uh, so, so if I take, say, for example, the language consisting of the symbol 0, and I concatenate it with 1, you would agree with me that equals this set, right? So I want to take this and I want to effectively use it to get 0, 1. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to translate this. So translates this translates into, of course, me just simply taking the regular expression for 1. And I concatenate it with, oops, sorry, I want a 0, then a 1. 0, 
and one. I'm just going to concatenate the two together and I get the regular expression zero one. So now I have this one so far. Now you might ask, okay, how many, so if I want to make it so it's like zero one, zero one, zero one, zero one, zero one, somebody tell me what operator should I apply to this entire expression? Star, perfect. Uh, uh, to get alternating uh, zero one, uh, repeated, apply star. Then, then we have, of course, one zero, one zero star. Let me just rewrite that. That, that zero is looking like it's melting a little too much for my taste. So this is the first thing I could tr try, right? I try to get zero one, sorry, one zero star. Actually, sorry, zero one, zero one. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, zero one. <laughs> zero one star. There we go. <laughs> so, so now this now we got alternating zeros and ones, right? But that that's not all of the strings that are going to be in this language, right? Uh, for example, I'm going to have ones. So I'm going to have a sequence of alternating ones and zeros, right? Okay, well, one zero one zero one zero one zero, right? So you might ask, okay, uh, so second. Uh, consider all alternating ones and zeros of the form of the form one zero one zero one zero and so on. Does anybody see what all I have to do to modify this? So how if I want to get those strings, what would I use? So Somebody tell me what the regular expression for just getting this set of strings. What would I do? Yeah, and then do what? Then do what? Start, perfect, yeah. So, perfect. Let's see, getting the hang of this. One, zero, star, like this. But you might ask, Dan, is that all of them? And the answer is unfortunately no, because if you think about it, I have also another two cases. There's another two cases. So, so far I have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, right? And I can do this as many times as I like. And then I also have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Notice that in this first case, every one of the strings is going to end with a 1, right? And every one in this case is going to end with a 0. But notice that they always start with either a zero or a one, respectively. What if they start off with a zero, sorry, with a one or a zero, respectively? So I need to capture those two cases. So, so to start with a zero, start with a zero in case one, so I'm just going to take case one. So I'm going to number this one to just save time. Um, we just simply concatenate a zero. So we end up with zero. Uh, let's go zero. Zero one like this. So notice I'm concatenating a zero on the front. Just to make sure, sorry, a one. I need a one here. Okay, let's let's just swap this around. Let's take that to one, zero, and I'm going to make this into a zero. My apologies, everybody. And so technically this would be case two. This is actually case two. Uh, case two. My apologies, everybody. So it's zero concatenated with a one, zero star. Remember the parentheses, don't forget those. I apologize, this looks a little like it's having a bad day. <laughs> so naturally, can somebody tell me what the last case is? So the case that I accidentally wrote. <laughs> so to start with a one in case, in case one, we concatenate a one, right? We concatenate the expression one. 
and we end up with what? One. And then I put just the, the, the zero one, right? And then have the star. Perfect. Then I put a star like this. Whoops, I need to underline that zero. Okay, so would you agree with me that I've got all of them now? I, that I have every string. So, so notice that this one starts with a zero and ends with a one. This one starts with a one and ends with a zero. That one starts with a zero and ends with a zero. And this one starts with a one and ends with a one. So, you, so I think I've got all of the cases, right? So I have all four possibilities. So now this is the trick. Now this is, now you might look at this and say, Dan, what the heck are you doing at this stage? Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Now, now watch, this is, this is the trick. Um, so when you have many cases like this, what you do is notice that I have exhausted possibilities that can happen, right? So you gotta go back to your union operation. So now I have technically four possibilities here, right? I have zero one star, I have one zero star, uh, zero one zero star, keep in mind parentheses, be careful, and one zero one star. So all I need to do is remember, these are the four possible cases that can happen for any string in my language. So all I'm gonna do is I take the union of all of them. So just take the union of all four cases. And we end up with the following, end up with one zero, uh, I think I have one, uh, zero one star first. It the order doesn't matter by the way, remember, union is, it, it could, th this is where the intuition of being a plus sign is very helpful because it's, it's a, you can commute elements and it's okay in union because it's just, remember they end up all in the same set, right? So I have one zero star, and then of course I have zero, one, zero star. So keep in mind the order of these doesn't really matter a whole lot. It's just, actually don't matter at all. It's just that the expressions are correct. So there's all my cases. And notice that now by using union, I can combine, like if I had simpler expressions to build more complicated ones. So does everybody understand what I just did here? So I built some smaller, smaller expressions. Each one of these cases does accept, lang accept strings of the language in question. The question is building the entire language that I want. So I do that by exhausting four possible cases here. Does everybody see what I did here? So I'm just trying to get all the alternating zeros and ones. Uh, so there's going to be some that are going to start off with a zero, some are going to start off with one, some are going to end with a zero, and some are going to end with a one. So I had to make all four possible cases. But you might ask naturally, Dan, is there a better way of doing this? And the answer is naturally yes, because this looks like a lot of work. And naturally you might ask, Dan, what's a better way of doing this? Keep in mind, for more complicated regular expressions, like there's nothing wrong with doing this. Um, but I'm gonna show you a clever way of doing this and I'll explain the regular expression to you. So let's, let's do this. I wanna show you a little trick that you could do. So here's a second approach that you could argue is a little bit more, a little, like it's trickier, but at the same time it naturally does a lot less. The, the expressions are shorter uh, if I do this little trick. Now remember, the strings always start with either a one or a zero, right? Likewise, they end either with a zero or a one. So what I can do is take advantage of the fact that epsilon is in fact an expression that I can use. Now, I want you to come back to an intuition that we had from epsilon NFAs. So remember an epsilon NFA, we had this notion of an epsilon move. And it essentially allowed us to make a free move from one state to another state. So we essentially could move sp spontaneously to another state, right? I want you to think, think carefully about this. 
in a regular expression, if I give you, if I give you the expression epsilon, and I read the regular expression of the language of that expression, that is just simply the set containing epsilon. So if I use epsilon anywhere, all it does is just gives me a free option, almost. Uh, you're going to see how I'm going to use this in a moment. So, so I put a little bit more explanation in the notes if you need more justification of how this comes about. Uh, there is a, a shorter regular expression as below. And I'm going to kind of justify it for you. That says below. I'm going to just rewrite that. That's terrible. Below. So here we go. Here we go. So watch this. Watch this. You're going to feel like, Dan, that was a lot of work you did. Let's <laughs> just watch this. I'm going to take epsilon. And I'm, so I'm going to have two expressions, epsilon and the, the, the expression for symbol one. Now, what I would like to do is I would like my language to take either epsilon or one. So it's going to be an optional one, you, the way you can think about this. You can think of this as an optional one. So I can either include one or I won't include one. And then now watch this. So let me do on the other side. I'm going to have an epsilon and zero like this. This will allow me to have an optional zero. So when you look at this carefully, Oh, uh, I want it to be able to be so that it could be zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So I want you to imagine I have, I'm not going to ignore this last part here first. So I want to be able to start with a one or a zero. So I can have it so I can take the eps. So imagine I take epsilon and I concatenate it with, like, say, for example, zero, one. You'd agree with me that's just zero, one, right? Just like if I took one and I concatenated it with zero, one, I get one, zero, one. So I'm going to just take this idea and take it to its full potential. So I'm just going to have zero, one, and I put a star here. And if you were to take this, so remember this set, the language that results from this expression, and you concatenate it with this expression, uh, the language of this expression, you should end up with a bunch of strings that look something like this. So, so remember that's either, so you're going to have epsilon and one like this. That's what this one is right here because of the union. This is concatenation. So I'm, I'm not going to apply the star quite yet. So I have zero, one, sorry, zero, one, the symbol zero and one. So before I apply the star, I just want to just justify this for you. So if I take an epsilon and I have zero, one, then it's just, so if I concatenate these two sets here, you could take epsilon with zero, one, so that ends up being zero, one. If I concatenate one with zero, one, I end up with one, zero, one, right? So notice that when I do the concatenation, now the epsilon operates like an option. So I have the option of including the one or not including the one. Does everybody see that? So when you think about it, before you perform this, so you can either include the one or you don't include the one. Then I can have a zero at the beginning or I can have a one at the beginning. Likewise here, I can have a zero at the end or I don't have a zero at the end. It ends with the one instead. So this regular expression actually captures the exact same language. And you might ask, Dan, where the heck is the empty string in this? <laughs> well, think about it. I have F, I could take epsilon. Remember, that's an option. Star includes where I don't include any of them, right? And I have epsilon right here. So epsilon concatenated with epsilon connect, connect, concatenated. Jesus. Uh, concatenated with epsilon. That's just epsilon, right? So does everybody see that? So this is a little bit craftier, but this is another way of representing the same language. Is that nice? Isn't that nice and intuitive? So in the notes, I've included a few more examples for you to look at. 
Uh, for example, remember that uh, like a lot of the time we look for common examples like computing and determining if there's a substring. Uh, so like detecting substrings, for example. We did that with DFAs, for example. I'll show. So in the notes, I have examples where you can detect key, uh, substrings, determining the length of a string, like if it's even. Um, likewise, I think I also have if it contains a one only one one. Uh, I have a few examples in the notes. I'm going to ask you to take a look at those. Uh, I just want one more minute of your time. I want to kind of do this as a motivation for next time. Uh, I want to remind you, remember when we did our Epsilon NFAs, we talked a lot about the idea of detecting keywords. We did this for NFAs, we also did it with Epsilon NFAs. I had that one example where it detected the keywords Pam and No. So I'm going to do one more example quickly here with you. So I imagine I have sigma and it's all the lowercase letters of the English alphabet. Uh, consider our previous, our previous epsilon NFA that accepted, accepted strings, uh, strings ending with Pam and no. So I want to show you how you could build a regular expression that does that. <laughs> so remember I had this thing where I had the start state. Oh, I, I see a question. Does somebody have a question? Sure, no, no problem. I'm just going to finish this off and then I'll wrap things up here, okay? So let me uh, just, so if I have Pam and no, remember in the Epsilon NFA, I had some, it looked akin to this, where I had, I had two paths, I used Epsilon moves, and I had, I had my alphabet here, and then I had two paths, right? So you're going to see that there's a nice way of representing things like this with a, a regular expression. What I could do is I could use the same strategy we used earlier to generate sigma star, right? So I could use sigma. So sigma in my case is my whole alphabet. <laughs> so I could take what a, b, c. I'm going to take the union of all of these. And my epsilon FA was allowed to read as many of these as I liked. Or it could go right to one of the one of the paths, right? So notice that this will allow me to take in as many A, B, C, Ds, and all the way up to Zs as I like by applying many unions, right? Now, I want it so that it accepts only strings ending with Pam or no. Does anybody have any idea as how I could do that? I'll give you a hint. I'm going to need a union right here. Yes. Yes. So I'll have this regular expression here. And what should go right there? Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. See, look. See, look. Now, now we have a regular expression. If you interpret this, you'll say, "Okay, well, it's either an A, a B, a C, or so on." I'm allowed to take in as many of these as like because of the star operator, or none of them. And then I concatenate those with the strings. So I'll take. So if you think of it as language consisting of all these strings, I'm going to concatenate it with the string that's going to consist of the concatenation of Pam or of No. So notice that. This is effectively the, well, it's the exact same language as this N Epsilon NFA was accepting. But notice how simple it is. Look, look, I didn't have to draw a fancy picture for you. Look, it's just, it's just right here. <laughs> Isn't that nice? So that's a nice feature. So next day, I'll show you how we can take our example where we were reading decimal numbers, and I'll show you how you can make a regular expression that uses that. Um, in addition, we'll be transitioning into talking about the connection these regular expressions have with all the stuff we've seen up to this point. So that being said, I'm going to finish recording here and then I'll come right back, okay? So that being said, I want to say thank you very much and have yourself a beautiful day. I'll see you later. Uh.